Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite serums, my Bay Bias collection as usual. Um, today I would like to tell you about a collection of theorems which I find very surprising and they are related to Eulerian and Hamiltonian graphs, which naive me always for a long time at least thought that they were kind of dual concepts, but in the end they are not. And one of them is crazy and one of them is easy. Um, so let's have a look. It's, it's really cute in the end. Um, so the classical problem, which goes back to this, well, puzzle type or the question people ask a long time ago, um, so in Königsberg. So um, very classical question, so here's a map of Königsberg and around the time Euler was in Königsberg, Königsberg had seven bridges. So those are those greenish things here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it was a, well, a little bit of puzzle or people wondered uh, whether you can actually walk through Königsberg, so take a walk through Königsberg, passing each bridge exactly once. And well, they can't figure that out. Um, probably because nowadays we are so biased, know so many things, uh, immediately would guess kind of, if people have thought about it for a while and nobody managed to find a pass, it is probably impossible. Yes, it is. It is impossible. You can't walk through Königsberg or to be completely precise, it wasn't possible. So I think the modern map of Königsberg looks a little bit different, but let's ignore that. So uh, let's say Königsberg still has, uh, it has still the same name. It doesn't have the same name anymore and also has uh, seven bridges. So you can't do that. You can't walk through Königsberg just passing every bridge exactly once. Um, the question is, of course, how do you prove that? And here comes Euler. Uh, genius among geniuses with a very brilliant insight. So Euler just says, hmm, okay, in order to solve this puzzle, I actually don't care that it's taking place in Königsberg. I don't care that it's about bridges and about passing through land masses. No, I will just do the following. I draw a vertex for each of those um, um, island type things and I connect vertices if there's a bridge between them. And I come up with what is nowadays called a graph. So if you do this for this Königsberg puzzle here, you end up with this graph on the right. So each vertex corresponds to one of the land masses and each uh, edge corresponds to one of the bridge. And then Euler argues as follows. Okay, um, sure, we want to find this little pass going around, passing each bridge exactly once, passing each edge exactly once. So let's have a look at this vertex here. It has three incoming outgoing, in this case it's the same, so three adjacent edges. And yeah, so I would need to pass every edge exactly once. So if I go, let's say in here and out here, then there's one edge left, which means as soon as I go over this edge, I can either never enter the vertex again, or I can never leave the vertex again because yeah, I've already used the other two bridges. I kind, of, I, kind of, I kind of kind of remove them from my problem, which means this vertex here at the top needs to be my starting or my end point of my pass. Right? Very simple argument. It has an odd number of adjacent edges. If you go through it, you always pass two and you are left with one because it has an odd number. After you've done this, you are left with one because it has an odd number of edges. And so this has to be a starting or an end vertex. Very nice argument, very easy. And then here it goes on, of course, uh, this one also has an odd number of adjacent vertices. So this also has to be a start or an end vertex. And so does this one and so does this one. But now we have a problem because, well, we can only have one start vertex and one end vertex. So let me repeat that again. In order to check whether this is possible or not, you create a problem in graph theory. So Euler just created graph theory uh, solving this problem. And it's down to a question to count um, kind of whether certain edges, uh, whether certain vertices have an even or an odd number of edges. Very simple, very easy solution. Brilliant Euler, genius among geniuses. Um, so let me just repeat what I mean here, very important. So here in this, what I call Eulerian, um, strictly speaking, and from now on, I'm going to talk about Eulerian cycles, not pass. So it's, the pass is just, it starts somewhere and it ends somewhere. And I'm, I'm now interested in a, something that starts somewhere, goes all the way, and then comes back to where, it's, where, where it started. So start point equals end point. And I call a graph Eulerian if it has a Eulerian cycle, meaning I have a cycle that goes around, and visiting every edge once. So really just related to this uh, problem of Königsberg just for cycles instead of pass. And Euler's criterion is just super efficient and it's very easy to check. You can do this by hand. All you need to do is, let me repeat it because it's so beautiful and important. Uh, all you need to do is to count the number of edges at each vertex. If it's odd, 
uh, if there's one vertex with an odd number, you're dead. If all uh, vertices have an even number of adjacent edges, you're good, and the problem is solved. So it's just a counting problem of even and odd. Very beautiful. OK, and a little bit later, people came up with the dual equation, or at least naive me would think this is a dual equation. Turns out that it isn't. We'll see that, uh, well, on the next slide. But first, let me explain the problem. So kind of the same setup, if you want. Uh, here's my same graph. And I'm asking for what is called an Hamiltonian cycle. Really kind of the same idea, but instead of demanding that I visit every edge once, I demand that I visit every vertex once, and exactly once, right? So I'm not allowed to pass uh, a vertex twice. So in this case, for example, I could start here at the bottom, and I could go around counterclockwise, so to this vertex, to this vertex, to this vertex, and that would be done. So this is an example. So the Königsberg graph is an example of a graph which is Hamiltonian, but not Eulerian, right? So it wasn't able, I, well, Euler tell, told us that there is no possible way to find a Eulerian cycle. And but my very easy going around uh, counterclockwise in this case, I could have gone around clockwise, of course, uh, going around counterclockwise shows that this is actually Hamiltonian. To me, this looks like this is a dual problem, right? One of them is talking about visiting every edge once, and the other one is talking about visiting every vertex once. So there should be some duality exchanging the two problems. Turns out that there is at least no known duality. I should be careful if I say, uh, right, there's no duality, because of course, this is kind of hard to prove. So let me just say there's no known duality collecting, uh, connecting the two, which I personally already find very surprising, because uh, what I would have done to connect this problem of Eulerian visiting every edge once, exactly once, uh, to Hamiltonian visiting every vertex exactly once, is I would have gone to the kind of the dual graph. So what is the dual graph in this setup? Well, here's my Königsberg graph again. And I create a dual graph. So this is G. And I create a dual graph, the so-called line graph. This is the one uh, that is marked in red in the following way. Um, so for each, uh, the, the new vertices of my graph are the old edges. So this yellow one, for example, is this one, and so on. So for each edge here, you have an associated vertex on the other side. And how do you connect the vertices in the line graph, in the L graph? Well, you just look in the original graph. This vertex um, is adjacent to all other edges in the, in the case, in the sense that it, it shares a common vertex with all those other edges. So you connect it in the line graph to all the others. So um, very easy procedure. Take your original graph. Every edge gives you a new vertex. And the connection in the new graph, in the line graph, is given by looking at the original graph and look uh, what edge shares a vertex with another edge. And you draw a, a line between them. And naive me would guess that this turns a new Larian into an Hamiltonian and an Hamiltonian into a Larian cycle. And this is kind of not true and kind of the underlying problem. So one direction is actually true. So if you have a new Larian circle, then its line graph gets a Hamiltonian circle. The converse is not true. And the Königsberg graph uh, is kind of an example. So this graph is not Eulerian. This is the Königsberg graph. That's what we have seen. But this graph is Hamiltonian. Um, so let me show you actually why. So you could start here and go all the way around. And then you have found a Hamiltonian cycle. So the problem here is that these are really not dual concepts. Also, they look very similar. Let me show you an animation in a graph which is both um, Hamiltonian and Eulerian. So here's a graph that is Eulerian and Hamiltonian at the same time. So first, I'm going to show you a Eulerian cycle. So let's have a look. So it goes around the little triangle in the middle, visiting every edge uh, once, and then kind of the outside triangle. So um, yet again, goes around the middle triangle. You're Note that it really visits every edge once, and then zigzags a little bit and goes around the outside triangle. Not so bad, right? But it visits every edge exactly once. So this is a Eulerian uh, cycle. Same graph, but now I'm up for a Hamiltonian cycle. So it should visit every vertex exactly once. And as you will see, it does not visit every edge once. But that's not what I demand. It just visits every vertex exactly once. So let's have a look. It also kind of goes around the triangle, but then it just comes back in this whatever it is thing, shape ish, uh, whatever, uh, airplane like shape, uh, very strange airplane. Anyway, so this is a Hamiltonian cycle. So this graph is actually both Eulerian and Hamiltonian. 
So this is kind of the setup. Um, you can have graphs that are Eulerian, but not Hamiltonian. You can have graphs that are Hamiltonian and not Eulerian. You can have graphs that are both, and you can have graphs that are neither. And there's still really nice duality connecting them, which I find very surprising. Um, and then even worse, one of them is super easy and one of them is super hard. I'm kind of assuming here that P is not equal to NP when I say uh, one of them is super hard. But um, anyway, so that's, I don't know. That's maybe true, so let's assume that for now. Anyway. Um, so the Eulerian, the question whether a graph is Eulerian is super easy to check. So it's just this condition that Euler already discovered. It's Eulerian if and only if every vertex has even degree. And degree is just to just count the number of adjacent edges. Very simple problem. And it gets actually better. So you can explicitly or so really algorithmically construct an Eulerian cycle in, in a very, very quick way. So as quick as it, get, as it gets, basically. I haven't checked the latest algorithm, so you probably can do much better than what is written here, but it's roughly in the uh, number of edges squared, which is as fast as it gets anyway. It's, it, I, don't, I don't, don't expect it to get much, much, much faster, but I have also haven't checked. It's still very, very fast. So it's basically a polynomial of degree two. Um, in stark contrast, so this is kind of the easy problem, the Eulerian problem, in stark contrast, the pseudo, uh, the pseudo dual problem is, is, is just so ridiculously hard. So um, it's almost impossible to solve. It's NP complete in, uh, in the formal language, which kind of wants to say that there is no good algorithm to, to attack this question. So checking whether a given graph is Hamiltonian is just ridiculously hard. Um, and I also don't know a really nice criterion to just ch check whether um, something is Hamiltonian or not. So nothing comparable to Euler's, uh, Euler's brilliant insight here, every vertex has an even degree. And all algorithms I know, again, I haven't checked the latest ones, are kind of very slow um, compared to the polynomial of degree two in the, in the edges. I'm not saying that there's nothing is known about those. There's definitely some progress. Everything is linked in the description. But in contrast to Eulerian, um, this is just very hard. Uh, to formulate this positively, kind of the field of doing research on Eulerian graphs is basically dead. I shouldn't say that probably, but there's not much to be done. It's kind of done. And, and Hamiltonian graphs are still very interesting. M many, many people are still thinking, many, many people, very smart people beyond me, are still thinking uh, about Hamiltonian graphs, which is a really, really easy question, which has apparently no nice or no uh, short answer. Again, this is kind of assuming that P is not equal to NP, because of course, if P is equal to NP, uh, God knows what happens anyway. Anyway, um, so it turns out that those are not dual, which I find very surprising. And one of them is super hard and one of them is super easy. Uh, so I also wanted to show you one, at least one graph, which is not Hamiltonian. So this one is not Hamiltonian. Uh, why? Well, you certainly need to visit all those middle vertices and whatever you do, you need to go, uh, well, from left to right here or from right to left, but then you're kind of stuck because you're not allowed to pass any vertex anymore. So you can either decide to go to the Northern Hemisphere or to the Southern Hemisphere, but you can't have both. So this, this uh, graph is easily seen to be non-Hamiltonian. The question is, given a kind of a random graph, can you check whether it's Hamiltonian or not? And um, that's turned out to be really hard. In some sense, it turned out to not be really hard. So here comes another surprising fact. So what I did here for to plot this diagram above is I looked at the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. And I added three, or well, I, I looked up three um, sequences, namely the number of graphs on n vertices, the number of Eulerian graphs on n vertices, and the number of Hamiltonian graphs on, eight, uh, on n vertices. I wasn't quite able to find all of them, but it was kind of good enough to, um, or all of them in a reasonable way, but it was kind of good enough to plot this diagram. Everything, as I said, is linked in the description anyway. So um, this is the ratio of Eulerian, respectively Hamiltonian, versus all. And um, it turns out that, well, the ratio should be some probability, like or something between zero and one. And it turns out that Hamiltonian uh, approaches one in the long run, and Eulerian approaches actually zero. And you can make this formally precise. You can say almost all graphs are Hamiltonian, and almost no graphs are Eulerian, which I think is a very surprising result, keeping in mind that checking whether something is Eulerian is very easy, and checking whether something is Hamiltonian is really, really hard. Um, but it, it makes much a bit more sense if I formulate it like this. Most graphs, uh, like this one here, or the, the Königsberg graphs, is just super easy to check whether they're Hamiltonian. And that's only a very tiny class of graphs where you 
or whatever, tiny, whatever tiny means, but there's a certain class of graphs where it's just very hard, right? Just because the problem in general is very hard doesn't mean that there are certain nice subclasses where you can actually check everything uh, very easily. Anyway, so this is also a little bit shocking. Like um, you're only talking about a very, very tiny class of graphs. So why should you worry, right? It's just a very, very tiny class of graphs in the end. So why should you care about something like saying more about uh, graphs being Hamiltonian or not? Well, the point is, well, generically, everything is kind of easy. And that's kind of the general flavor in mathematics and maybe in life itself. So generically, everything is relatively easy and in some sense also relatively boring. Um, so my life generically is relatively boring, right? It's relatively boring most of the time. And then there are those singularities and those singularities make mathematics and life uh, very interesting. So singularities in life would be a birth of a child. That's a singularity in life and all parents definitely know that <laughs> that is a life changer. While most of your day is pretty boring, it's pretty generic. And it's a little bit like this with those Hamiltonian graphs. So there's a kind of a tiny class of graphs, which uh, kind of makes this whole problem are very interesting. And I, I don't have a good measure of what it means tiny here, but I, I still like this, uh, this analogy. Anyway, let me wrap up. So Eulerian Hamiltonian graph visiting every edge once, exactly once, or visiting every vertex exactly once are not dual problems. Don't confuse that. I was confused a long, for a long time. They're not dual. One of them is very easy. One of them is very hard. Um, and I find that very surprising. That's why I added it to my list of favorite theorems. Uh, in any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.